So I kind of wanted to give you a, a reference to go over um, along with this FPGA uh, LCD programming series. Um, so we'll kind of go over the, the data sheet for the LCD that I was using. Um, maybe with this, you can tie back into uh, whatever LCD you're working with or really any 16 by two or even bigger. Um, you just kind of have to modify per your situation. So this is the actual um, LCD that I used to program or that I programmed for um, for this series and for this project. Um, I got it from SparkFund. I'll link this in the uh, description down below. Um, and I'll even give you guys a, a link to the uh, to the product page on Amazon. So this is the data sheet for the SparkFund LCD that I was working with. Um, kind of get through the, the quick first stuff here. Um, you know, this is basically general stuff. You're gonna wanna go through and read some of this stuff. Uh, mechanical spe specs for, you know, putting the thing on in a, in a product or something, um, which could be done ultimately, should be. Um, and then kind of how the actual LCD is laid out. You've got this uh, LCD controller and driver, which is where your memory resides. That's why all your data lines go in there uh, and your control uh, ports for that. The uh, LED, um, the backlight driver lines, um, which you'll ultimately hook up a potentiometer to to change the LED, the backlight um, brightness. And then you've got uh, your pin description. Um, kind of went over this in the video, uh, the the uh, LCD programming video. But you know you've got your uh, VSS pin, VDD, V not. All these are your kind of your power supply pins. And then you've got uh, your your control pins. So uh, register select, read and write select, and enable. Uh, your data pins, um, and then your uh, LED pins that we just talked about. Um, and then uh, let's see. Here's your here's like the ways to hook up the potentiometer to change the back backlight. Um, you can see I kind of went with this way over here, uh, the optical characteristics, um, kind of get through to the timing charts. So these timing charts are, are one of the most important things and you want to look at this when you do your timing um, within the, you know, for the clocks for the FPGA. So when you, when you make your clock and you do that division to figure out your time, You'll use this to say, okay, I want this to happen at this point in time and this to happen at this point in time. How many clock ticks from here to here or how many clock ticks from uh, the beginning to the end or from one cycle to the next cycle or from, say, the RS to RW or RS and RW need to have what's going on done before we have the enable running um, and how much of all that needs to be done, how long before uh, we actually start sending data, right? And so like here, the enable pin needs to be pulled up a certain amount of time uh, before you start putting data through to the to the actual unit. Um, there's minimum rise times and stuff like that. So just kind of pay attention to this when you go through going through and making your timing. Uh, if you have any questions, post those down below. I'll see if I can answer them. Um, if there's enough questions, I may just make a video all about the timing because this is kind of where I, I wind up using a lot of uh, Boolean logic to construct a, a proper timing sequence. You don't have to do as much as I did. Um, you can probably just use separate clocks to make different things happen. Uh, but it's very important that the timing is right or, or it won't work at all, right? Uh, so then we kind of keep going down through the, the data sheet. You'll get a, a description of what each line does, um, what some of the, the uh, functions are, and how to work with those functions. Um, and then kind of a, uh, a character generation graph to kind of show you how they generate the characters per line, uh, the order of how it works, the patterns and stuff like that, which way the cursor can move, where it starts blinking, does it blink, um, stuff like that. So a lot of this stuff is very, very important. You're gonna wanna go through your, your individual data sheet and just give it a, give it a quick read over um, and pay attention to some of the stuff that, that is important, like some of these notes during internal operation uh, busy flag is read high. Uh, busy flag check must be preceded by the next instruction. So you must check the busy flag um, before you proceed to the next instruction. Uh, so on this table, you kind of get the instruction sets. Um, it's all of them kind of laid out for you. How to clear the display, how to return home, entry mode set. So the clear display thing, I think we use in the code um, when we go to reinitialize. Uh, how to return home, 
entry mode set, uh, display control or display on and off control. So you can turn the display on and off. Uh, some of these things are used in that initialization step, right? Um, and then you can use them over, over and again, uh, just depending on where you need them. And these are these are the actual data bits on those data lines, right? So you have DB7 down to DB0, which are those eight bits that we're working with when we're sending it out. And then, of course, you're going to have to do RS and RW, depending on what step you're working on uh, within the display. Uh, so we go down through here. You have uh, increment decrements. Uh, you can shift the entire display, um, of course, turning the display on and off, the cursor on and off, the blink on and off for the cursor, um, then shifting patterns, all that sort of thing. Uh, let's see, set uh, CG RAM addresses, DD RAM address. So you can actually, with this, I think you can actually pull the data back off of it. So if you write something to it, you can kind of use the LCD as a temporary holder for that data, uh, go do something else, come back, and when you need that data again, pull it back off so you know what was displayed on the LCD at that time, uh, which might be important if you have separate processes, right? So you might have one process write something to the LCD, and then the next process will write something different to the LCD, and you might want to go back in the next next process and find out what happened in the previous process or even the process before that. You can pull all that data off the LCD um, from its memory banks and say, okay, this is what happened. Um, you can also use it for little hacks like, you know, a place to store info um, and, and such, right? Um, so one of the most important parts of this and what I really wanted you guys to see is they have a full chart here, kind of a, a uh, um, truth table to show you how to make all these different letters and characters. And, and what's important behind this is that you notice they're literally making these characters using the eight data pins, uh, like this one's uh, low, 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 uh, low, 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 high. And that's this right here, this pattern, which is basically nothing. And that's going to be as long as those last four, the upper or the upper four are low, 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 high, then you're not going to show anything on the screen. Um, if you have low, low, high, low on those upper four, then you can go through and make these little things here. And if you look at the description before, it shows you with these patterns, you can you can draw, say, just this one pixel here, or this one pixel here, and this one pixel here, or whatever you need to. But if you go through and look at these patterns, say we got the high, low, high, high, with low, 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 you can go through and, and decode that to what it speaks about before and see how they're actually drawing uh, bitwise or uh, uh, piece by piece, multiplexed, I guess, piece by piece, the... Um, the data on the screen. Um, then we just have the quality specs, um, how to how to put the thing in mechanically and how to look at it, um, the viewing angles and stuff like that. Um, quality assurance, point defects, stuff like that. Um, most of this stuff is going to be, you know, when you're when you're laying out a, a PCB, you can look at some of the different stuff, and then also. Um, some of the the more intricate things within the mechanical specs of the of the unit, um, how to solder it, um, the kind of PCB patterns and stuff. Uh, let's see, not allow screw rust or damage, not allow missing or wrong putting of component. A lot of this is in kind of a a mixed language, uh, so it may be a little off. I guess you got right angle stuff here. Is that tabs bonding strength? Yeah. So a lot of the rest of this is just about. Uh, general stuff for the LCD and how to put it on, let's say a PCB and stuff like that. Um, so yeah, that is the data sheet. You got soldering precautions, um, operating instructions, stuff like that. So that's the data sheet that, that we worked with. If, uh, if there's any section that you guys want more of a fine tuned look at or want me to make a video on perhaps, uh, then let me know in the description below and I'll, I'll go in and do that. Um, otherwise, uh, there's your, there's your, data sheet for this project for this LCD. All right, thank you guys for watching this video. It was kind of an added piece to this video. I wanted to go over the uh, Mojo V2 um, diagram real quick, just so you can have an, an idea with the Mojo V2, how to hook up, stuff like that. Uh, so if you look through the, the previous series and I talk about the different pins and stuff, these are the layouts of the different pins. Um, and you can see kind of, you know, next to them are, are written kind of a, a compressed version of what the pin is, what it does, what it's for, uh, stuff like that. And I kind of leave this here so you, maybe you can pause the video on it and take a screenshot or or do whatever you want. I know you can find this online probably at the link down below 
Um, but just in case, I'll make it quicker and easier for you guys to get to it. Uh, thank you for watching the video. Thank you for watching the series if you made it all the way through. Um, if you haven't gone through the series and you were just looking up uh, LCD displays uh, and you're interested in FPGAs and how to program an FPGA to run a, a an LCD like this, uh, then you might want to check out the, uh, the FPGA series um, to program FPGAs for LCDs that's on my channel. Uh, otherwise, y'all have a great day um, and love well.